So this is a special podcast request and actually it goes back a number of years and I was going to do it for my sports file column years ago but I didn't have the opportunity especially on the anniversary of the 1972 Summit Series. Now a lot of people remember the 72 eight game series Team Canada against the Russians and three players basically lost their mind or said publicly lost their mind because of the series and losing your mind mean their nationalistic fever got the best of them. One was Frank Mahovlich for obvious reasons he never trusted the Russians or the communists. Phil Esposito for completely obvious reasons. And the third person that people forget he was pretty well the other enforcer for Team Canada besides a certain player that shall not be named, well Bobby Clare, Gary Bergman. Gary Bergman who was a special invitee from uh, Harry Sinden to John Ferguson for the 1972 set. Bergman entered the uh, Super Series as basically one of the toughest defensemen in the NHL. He had uh, started and had some great years with Detroit Red Wings. Uh, he was an AHL veteran for many years and eventually showed up on the, the roster of the Red Wings, uh, helping uh, the Wings make it to the 66 Stanley Cup Finals. And he always said, you know, uh, they won the series, but I think, uh, uh, you know, Henri Richard in a famous uh, uh, game-winning goal, he pushed the puck in with his glove, and the goal should not have counted. Um, he was kind of an offensive, uh, defensive defenseman. Uh, he's well-rounded play, made him uh, useful in both the power play and penalty carry, killing. Although he uh, incurred his share of penalties, he, uh, Bergman's toughness uh, drew respect. He was kind of a, you know, a kind of a grinder style. And uh, unfortunately, at the time, Detroit was starting to fail after Howe left. Bergen was, uh, you know, the key veteran on a, a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, second division team. Uh, but he was well known for his off-ice uh, antics, helping uh, charities, including disabled children and adults. And he was one of the most uh, liked NHLers off the ice due to charity work, winning the Charlie Conacher Award. But on the ice, he was... He was uh, he was gritty. Now his best offensive season was 1968, having uh, 41 points, including 13 goals. And uh, you know that offensive, defensive mix was a great fit for Team Canada. He is known for two basic major incidents during the series. In Game Seven, uh, Boris Mihailov and him were uh, fighting in the corner, and uh, Mihailov kicked him or tried to kick him. And as Gary Bergman later said, there's no uh, kicking in hockey, and he basically lost his mind. Now, in Game Eight, with Canada trailing 5-3 in the in the uh, uh, third period, he was uh, on the ice for some of the big offensive rushes uh, for Team Canada that led him to the 5-5 tie, and later Paul Henderson's uh, game-winning goal. But if you look very closely, with two minutes left, uh, Bergman got a big pass from Brad Park and almost hit the five hole through Trechak's uh, legs, but Trechak came up with a big uh, save. I still don't know how Trechak stopped that shot. I think Bergman was just uh, kind of amazed. He was on a mini breakaway and he almost scored. But you can imagine how NHL history and the history of Paul Anderson would have been completely changed if Bergman would have scored. Gary Bergman would have been seen as a national hero. I don't think uh, the Russians could have scored to tie the game uh, with two minutes left. You know, 34 seconds, obviously, was, was last time. But the way Team Canada was coming on that third period, uh, you know, with Esposito's goal and then Cornway, and uh, they were controlling the play almost continuously in the last 10 minutes. But imagine if Gary Bergman would have scored. We'd be talking about, oh, Gary Bergman, uh, have different stuff named after him, and how, you know, Paul Anderson became a born-again Christian after scoring that goal because he felt that the notoriety of that goal did give him the a personal piece that he had sought out. But Gary Bergman was destined to be that piece of the puzzle that we needed. Not the greatest defenseman like uh, Lapointe or Savard, um, you know, later Larry Robinson for Team Canada. He was gritty. He was willing to do the dirty work that was needed to be done with the Russians. I still remember him on the bench doing the old, you know, cut the troll thing to the Russians. If anybody was wearing that Canadian flag with the flag on his heart, it was Gary Bergman. We always forget because, you know, he was sort of like the guy in the war movie that would, you know, go with John Wayne up the hill and be killed in the last five minutes. 
you know, kind of the Eddie Albert in the Dolonga's Day style. You couldn't have won against the Russians in 72 without having somebody like Gary Bergman. Because in the words of John Ferguson, I didn't have to tell Gary Bergman to hit the Russians or to, you know, to keep the Russians from scoring. He had a job to do. He did it. And, uh, you know, he, he passed away in uh, in 2000s at quite a young age, actually, at 62. But if uh, Gary was still alive, he could tell you, you know, beating the Russians was the highlight of his career. And watching him overachieve in that 72 series after some tough years in Detroit was quite a thing to, uh, to see. Like I said, Team Canada had no, no Gordie Howe, no Bobby Hull, no Jerry C. Trombley, no Jerry Cheevers, no Jerry Pender. All the top players were not at the 72 set, and he overachieved for the people that couldn't be there. He played like J.C. Trombley without having to play a J.C. Trombley game. And I still say if he would have scored that goal, hockey history and Canadian history would be totally changed. But uh, I can basically say uh, Bergman's legacy, I'm still talking about him 47 years after seeing him miss that play, and that's the legacy enough. If a sports journalist like me can recognize how much he meant to NHL, and uh, world hockey I think that's the greatest legacy so but if you have a chance to uh, watch the game part two of game eight which is available in various formats on YouTube and see how close he came it like literally was a mini second he could have scored and it was so quick Trechak uh, on the save and it was so quick Bergman got that pass from Park so so on this uh, family day uh, Monday we wish uh, all the team Canada fans uh, good luck today because you know you got to keep your stick in the ice and I really, really think that if we had more Gary Bergmans back in 74, we would have done better. Uh, you know, I don't think Pat Stapleton was Gary Bergman. And, you know, I, I looked at the 74 series and I wonder, what if Gary Bergman would be playing tonight? What, what would happen? So, anyway, hope this finds you well. Have a great day. Bye.